times with your dad? I mean, back then. I know you want more good times with him. So why don't you just give him another shot? At least let him try and make it up to you. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh, you're alive. That's a relief. Didn't you get any of my messages? Phone was on silent. Sorry, didn't get him. AJ, I know what happened with your dad. Okay, you have to know that he feels absolutely horrible about it. Please come back with me to the hospital. He so wants to make it right. Please. What is that on your face? What? Did you get a scratch? How did that happen? Did she take a swipe at you? Now, any girl that is hitting boys is not worth ditching her, his mama for. This did not come from Celia. And did I tell you, you look amazing today, Mom. Don't get you go there. Dude. Don't you start with the charm to try to change the subject. I want to know how you got that scratch. Are you going to tell me, or, or am I going to be left to imagine the worst possible scenario? It, it's just kind of embarrassing. Okay, I, I completely got nailed in the face by some thorns when I was climbing her trellis outside of her dorm room. You, 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 you climbed a wall? To get to your beloved? I know, I know, tragically old school, but Celia was running late to her curfew and blah, 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 blah. I had to sneak her in. And you know I wasn't going to leave until she was safe in her room. Oh, so chivalrous of you. No, it's just that Bramwell Hall, they like have everybody on some lockdown or something. Oh, and then her psycho guardian, he's just obsessive with these rules. It's. Oh. What was this? Obsessive psycho guardian, I guess you won't be able to see her again tonight. Mom, do you really think that's gonna stop me? I mean, psycho watchdog guardian dude or not, I'm gonna be seeing Celia as much as possible. <sighs> Sweetheart, I know that you're scared. I know you are. But I'm pretty sure that the men who were holding you now have my daughter, and if that's the case, you're our only connection to Cassandra, so I'm asking. No, I'm begging. Please. Please help me find my daughter. You did good last night. You brought in lots of money. You get treated well when you do that. Good girl. Soon we will see what other talents you have. Well, I might have something. There's a private strip club outside of Center City. There might be something there. I'm not sure what. Zach Slater? Oh, well, there's a surprise. Special Agent Leah Marquez, FBI. You're under arrest. AJ, your dad realized who you were the minute you walked out the room. I mean, he couldn't get up and follow you because he can barely sit up, much less walk. He made me promise to tell you how sorry he was for making you feel like you didn't matter. Because you do matter. You always have. Please come with me to the hospital. Dixie, um... Could you give AJ and I a sec? Yes. Uh, 
Yes, of course. Um, I'll go find Brooke. I, I have a couple things I need to check with her. Um, I'll be I'll be back in a few minutes. Look, Ace, I get it. You're pissed. I would be too. No one's fighting you on that. But I know you want him back in your life. I know you want to be a family again. What do you say? Give another shot. Hmm. Guess. Come on, let's go find Dixie and go to the hospital. Excuse me, are you Ms. Johnson? Yes. Uh, the receptionist downstairs said I might find you here. Yes, can I help you? I am Opal Cortland. Pete's mama. I, I'm sorry, Pete? Pete, yeah, the boy that Celia Fitzgerald's been dating. I just wanted to stop by and make sure that she didn't get into too much trouble last night for, you know, what happened. I mean, I know that Bromwell Hall has very strict rules about curfews, and I am all for that. I mean, we have to take care of our girls, right? Celia is not in any trouble that I'm aware of. Well, that is a relief. Because as I was walking up here, I couldn't help but notice that broken trellis outside. Uh, I'm sure it's the one leading to this window here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, yes. There it is. Uh, seems that somebody busted through the slats while sneaking back in after curfew last sneaking night. Sneaking in? Isn't that romantic? <laughs> but not to worry. I mean, I am perfectly happy to pay for any repairs. The last thing I would want is for either of those sweet kids to get called on the carpet for something as silly as this. I've been sneaking out of Bramwell to spend time with Pete Cortland. Oh, but I thought that... We were done? Well... We were, but only because I thought he wasn't who I thought he was. And it turns out I was wrong. He's, he's exactly that guy. Well, I'm very glad that everything got cleared uh, up. You and me both. You really like him, don't you? I have never felt this way before. Oh, <laughs> it's a wonderful feeling, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so... Celia, hey, uh, I think you'd be here. I didn't think I'd see you here either. Uh, hi. Hi, Pete. Hi, Brooke. Sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, actually, Celia and I were uh, just going over some paperwork for the center. Oh, then we're here for the same reason. <gasps> Business. Oh, this is... Oh, you're so good. This is great. Thank you for getting this to me so quickly. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I think there's something I should be doing. So, um, I'll be back in a little bit. I was just thinking about you last night and so much fun we had. Ditto. Oh, but your poor face. Totally worth it. <laughs> I wish I knew I was going to bump into you. I would have, you know, spent the day with you or something, but I've got half a dozen meetings, conference calls. It's just a Well, mess. but I'll, I'll see you later, right? Most definitely. <laughs> How are we going to top last night's excitement? <laughs> I mean, is that even possible? Very. There must be something that you remember. Something that could help lead us to my daughter. All the rooms were dark. They blacked out the windows. It was small and dirty and smelled. Smelled of what? Sweat. Rotten food. Did you ever go outside? Only when we were working. At night, usually to a club or a motel. They would load us in the back of trucks, like the moving vans you can rent. And there are no windows. What about markings on the trucks? Do, do you remember any lettering or signs? There would be weeks we wouldn't go out at all. And they would bring 
the men there. The new girl is going to be good money. She's clean, exotic, beautiful. You take advantage of this before she shoots up. Call Marvin. Tell him we have new talent. Well, I don't think she's ready, boss. Don't think. Do. I knew there was something special about you when I met you last night, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Actually, I wasn't supposed to put my fingers on it. House rules. Apparently, you didn't hear me before. You're under arrest. For what? Enjoying the view? Okay, am I gonna have to make a scene in here, or are you gonna come in no, quiet? What I want you to do is meet a friend of mine, Jesse Hubbard, Chief of Police in Pine Valley. What's this all about? It's a federal matter. Well, if it has anything to do with Mrs. Slater's actions last night, I take full responsibility. He's assisting me on a case. It has to do with Mr. Slater being a person of interest in my case. Okay, can we just sit down? I'm sure we can straighten this all out. I think that's a good idea. Come sit. Jesse, it's funny. I've had strippers pretend to be cops before. I never had a cop pretending to be a stripper. That's it. Have it your way. You're under arrest. Oh you have the right to remain silent. Would you silent. put the cuffs away? Sit down and shut up. You gotta listen to him. He's a real bear when he doesn't have his cops. I'm a federal agent, and I'm here to arrest this man. You are here in my jurisdiction. That means you will give me the professional courtesy that entails. There's no reasoning with them. Coffee's on me, by the way. How do you like it? I don't. Can we just sit? Please. Now, can we start fresh? What are you investigating? Money laundering. Money laundering? And how does Mr. Slater factor into this, allegedly? His casino is one of the many businesses that I am covering. They all lead to the same dummy offshore accounts. At least one of those accounts is owned by your friend Slater here. See, that's what I mean, Jesse. Koslov's are pulling out all the stops. What do you know about the Koslov's? Oh, your investigation is about to take a very ugly turn, Special Agent Marquez. What do you mean? Which office branch are you with? Philly. I suggest you check in with D.C. Because this goes way beyond money laundering. You are now dealing with sex trafficking. Hey, hold up. Something the matter? Hey, listen. Just hear what your dad has to say. If you don't like any of it, you can leave. Hey. Look who came to see you. My son. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes. I'll be right outside. AJ, I'm so sorry about last night. I didn't mean to forget me. No, but I, I, I didn't forget. Okay, I just... You were such a little boy before. You know, I mean, look at you now, bud. You're all grown up. Nobody calls me bud anymore. Right. Sorry. I've missed a lot. And I'm sorry I wasn't around the past five years to be your dad. It's not like you were much of anything else before that. No. I guess I wasn't. You know what the worst part was? Is that was my biggest fear. I mean, having anything close to the kind of relationship that I had with my dad which wasn't a relationship at all. And I'm so sorry that I put you through the same thing. I left. Yeah, but you didn't deserve it. No, any more than you, you deserve to have lost the only mother that you ever knew. Hey, Jay, I don't, listen, I don't remember doing it. Okay, all I know is I, I must have been out of my mind to have gone after Marissa. What were you thinking? I mean, I can't even ask you to forgive me. I'm never gonna be able to forgive myself. But please just know that I never, ever meant to hurt you. It's the last thing that I ever wanted to do. Well, 
from the looks of things, I think that whole trellis is going to have to be replaced. And as the mother of one of the culprits, I insist on paying those costs. Uh, yeah, one thing you can say about Petey, he is used to getting his way. And he never lets anything, not a trellis or a curfew, stand in his way of getting it. I mean, he's what you call a creative problem solver. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Cortland, I, I appreciate your taking the time to stop by. Oh, it's no problem at all. I mean, we got to look out for love, right? <laughs> and let's just hope that a broken trellis is all that either one of us ever has to worry about with those two. Yes, <laughs> let's just hope that. Yes. <laughs> Good day. Uh, lovely to meet you. Okay, so if we get out of here by four, I'll make six o'clock reservations. That should give us more than enough time to at least settle well, in. I'm really sorry to interrupt the two of you, um, but Celia and I have to get back to doing some work. No problem. I actually have a meeting I gotta get to, too. I'll call you. I'm playing around four. Okay. I can't wait. <laughs> me neither. Kate, hey, let me walk you out. <laughs> I don't want to talk anymore. Maybe, maybe later you get some rest, okay? I'm sorry about your daughter. No one should have to go through what she's going through. Grandma, go. I'll deal with her. Where'd the chief go? He's following a lead. Well, according to headquarters, this just became my case. Congratulations, just you or Scooby and the gang coming down. Okay, just because I throw on a G-string and swing on a pole doesn't mean I'm not good at my real job. And I don't mean that. I just, what I was saying was that you're really good in a G-string on a pole. Well, I'm even better at this. Like, there's a lot of questions I need answers to, and I really don't feel like playing games trying to get them. Okay. Sit. And before you start, just so you know, I can have you arrested if you prove uncooperative. All right, I'll be on my best behavior. But let's keep in mind that there's a young lady out there waiting to be found. So let's hurry it up. <laughs> you have been such a good girl. <laughs> Don't disappoint me now. I know it won't be easy to regain your trust, or anyone else's for that matter. Yeah, you're probably right about that. But the good news is that I'm awake. And now that I am, I can focus on being the dad I always wanted to be. The kind of dad you always should have had. I'm really glad you came back. Whatever. Everything okay in here? I gotta go. AJ! Don't let him go. I was a shitty dad before the coma. You know, I come out of it, and the first time I see my son, I don't even recognize him. I mean, no wonder he still thinks I'm the same asshole I used to be. I'm sure you told him that how sorry you were. Sure, I did. Then he heard. He just doesn't trust me. Two of you have been through a lot. As long as you keep talking about the situation, you just have to trust that that, that could possibly really bring you closer. You know, it won't be easy. But I will make it right with my son. Evelyn, what are you doing in here? I am waiting for you because I have a surprise that I think you're really going to like. What kind of surprise? You and I are going to spend the rest of the spring and the summer traveling through Europe. What? 
Hmm? And we leave tonight. So you, young lady, you have to start packing right now. No, I'm, I'm not going. How do you explain the account being in your name with your signature okay, on the right, card? Okay, okay, I will try one more time to explain this to you. The Coslons, the same people that took my friend's daughter, are trying to set me up. I've spent most of the afternoon here trying to explain to you what that means. Now I'm bored, I'm tired, and I'm going home. Hold on. What are you gonna do? Arrest me? Maybe. I don't think so. And why not? Because I know two unshakable facts about you. Number one, you're really smart. The FBI doesn't give those badges to just anyone. You're smart enough to know that if I were guilty, I wouldn't let you guys look at my books. Smart enough to know that if you did arrest me, it would start a huge storm that would last long enough for this poor girl to die. It would cost her her life. And I know you don't want that hanging on your head. So, I'll see you later. So what's the other? What? Unshakable fact about me. You got a great ass. Do uh, you, you told Dr. Hubbard that they blacked out the windows so you couldn't see out, but do you remember hearing anything? Uh, traffic noises, children playing, um, um, uh, construction sounds, anything. A train. Maybe. Well, a train. That's something. Can you remember? Was it loud or some, some, somewhere off in the distance? You could sort of feel the vibrations when it went by. And how often did it go by? Once. Twice a day. There was a lot of time in between. And, and, and the sound of this train. Did it last a while? Or did it come and go quickly? It was long, a few minutes at least. I remember wishing that I was on it. Thank you so much, you did really good. You get some rest now, right? It's not much to go on, but it does narrow things down. It sounds like a freight train. <laughs> I'm gonna work up some maps, okay? Hey. We are one step closer to finding her and bringing her home. Very nice. Marvin! No! 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 no.